As for nearing the completion of our eat-in kitchen, we're missing one important thing. You can see the kitchen is looking awesome, but we're missing the eat-in part. You can see we left a large expanse of room unused because we want a table. We really wanted the dining table to match the countertop, which we did a nice birch butcher block countertop. So when I picked up the countertop, I also picked up an extra slab of birch butcher block. This is the same as we used up here. And you can see this is a nice big piece, 74 inches long, 39 inches wide. It's a little too large for our table, but this is gonna be our tabletop. First step of this job is just to figure out how big we want our table to be. Since we have this top, it's actually a really good way to just get a feel of the space and how it's gonna sit in the kitchen. I was thinking of a table that was about um, maybe three feet wide, five feet long. Trying to get out and hitting the chair into the wall. It might be beneficial to take off the three inches so we have more. Just that there. little bit of extra. So Ashley and I have talked it over. We're gonna go with 36 inches by 66 inches, which is three feet by five and a half feet. That's the biggest table that we can put in this space comfortably. When you design a dining space, I think the minimum clearance you want around your table is 30 inches. That's the minimum for you to have chairs around your table and still have room to get in and out without it being too uncomfortable. So we're really trying to push the limits and we can fit it 30 inches, 30 inches and still be centered under the light uh, and still have enough room here to get around and I think it's going to be fine. So. We're going to unwrap this, mark it out, and try to get it cut as straight and evenly as we can. I'm using this old piece of siding as a saw guide so I can get a somewhat straight line. Now that came out really, really good. These edges are so clean. So I'm happy with the cuts I made. And this is the tabletop. Now I have to turn it into a table, which means legs. I'm gonna start framing up the bottom. So we actually flipped this over. It's upside down right now. And what I did was I ripped some pieces of two by four. These are just regular old two by fours that are ripped down to an inch and a half kept the beveled side of the two by four, angled and pre-drilled it to go around the bottom of the table, just like this. Like that. Now this is mostly decorative, but it does serve some structural help. Basically, I didn't want the uh, wood slab just kind of free floating with legs. I just felt a little uneasy about that and I thought it would look kind of weird, maybe just too thin. So by putting this around the edge, it'll give the table some depth, make it look a little nicer, and hopefully add a little strength to it just so it has a less of a chance of maybe splitting, bowing, whatever. A little extra strength. So it's all pre-drilled. I'm just going to line it up right where I want it and start screwing it in. So you can see I mitered the corners. They're gonna sit about three quarters of an inch back, you know, from the edge. That's just what I chose. Oh, oh, oh I'm so clumsy. Wow, I think I only have one screw left over after this is all done. Whoa. That's cutting it close. Oh, two screws, there was one on my drill. Thank you. 
Now I'm gonna coat the bottom with oil before we attach the legs and flip it over. And I'm just doing this so that the bottom and top have a kind of a, they're both sealed. Uh, if one was left raw, I think it has more of a tendency to bow. And you'll see what kind of legs I'm doing very soon. I just want to get this oil on because it'll make sense to. It's easier to do the oil right now without the legs. So we got the whole bottom oiled and it's looking really good. It's finally time to put the legs on it. And we decided to keep these legs really simple and bought these hairpin style legs. Really cool metal legs. Um, just really easy way to make a table. So I'm gonna go ahead and pre-drill my holes just to make sure the screws go in easily. I'm gonna pre-drill the holes into the wood and then we'll get these screwed on. Now this might seem out of order, but I still have to sand down this edge and that edge that we cut. They're really clean, but they don't have a soft bevel like these other edges do. I just felt like it was going to be easier to finish the bottom, flip it over, and then worry about the top. The whole top is really smooth, sanded it down nice, got my beveled edges. I'm ready to oil it, and the goal here is to make this match this. It's the same wood, so it should match, and it's gonna look really awesome in here. I'm happy with how this is coming out, and it's so easy to make. Well there it is guys, the new dining table is complete. It was actually pretty easy to build. All I had to do was buy that top, cut it to size, attach my two by four supports for the bottom, which I think adds a lot of, uh, it adds something to the table. Gives it the depth and dimension that I like. And screw the legs on, pretty simple. Now I found these legs while searching online and I've known about them for a long time and I've wanted to use them for so many years and I finally got a chance to put them to use. There's a lot of different websites that sell them. I found ours on the Hairpin Leg Company website. Uh, really good quality, made in the UK. 
And the reason I bought these over the other brands is because the quality looked good and I really liked the feet, as silly as that sounds. They come with these little floor protectors to put underneath the legs so the metal isn't just rubbing on the floor. I like the style of their protectors better than some of the other ones. So uh, I'm sure they're all good, made of solid steel. Like I said, these are made in the UK. There's some made in the USA and there's others made in China. I'm really happy with those. They come with the hardware screws to hook it up and everything. The room still feels a little incomplete because we still have a lot of work to do, including buying chairs to put at the table. Unfortunately, we don't have any chairs yet. And you can see I put our infinity mirror lighting back up. This is really cool. And if you didn't see the video where we revealed this, I'll post a link to it below. Go watch that. It's really cool to see this light in action. I uh, did some really good close-up shots of it. And we're going to stick with this for now. It actually doesn't give off a lot of lighting, but it looks really cool in here. So we're going to we're going to use it. So our table, when it's all complete, sits about 30 inches tall. It's five and a half feet long, three feet wide. It's actually like the biggest size table we could fit in this space. As you can see, it doesn't leave a lot of room, but enough room to move around. When the chairs are in here, it's gonna get a little more cramped. We wanted to make sure we had a really comfortable table to sit at. And now you can kind of see also why we designed our kitchen to be this galley type. We really wanted the table to be over here and tables take up a ton of space. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video today and watching me put this table together. It's a really easy project that just about anybody can do. Really basic tools, minimal skills, and you could have a really cool custom sized table for your house. If you want a little bit of extra durability, you could always coat it with polyurethane instead of the oil. We just like the oil finish because it's easy, it's natural, and just preference, just preference. Again, thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, take care.